Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a legend from 1991, launched that year as a revival of the Renaissance-era wandering hours clock complication. This is the Audemars Piguet Star Wheel. It's 36 millimeters in yellow gold, 8 0.5 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip it's 39 millimeters and it has a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs you can see on the wrist it's comfortable it's short across the wrist it's flat and it fits underneath the cuff this is what a men's dress watch would have been in the 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s and early 90s 36 was a good size back then and considered to be a mid to upper level scale the watch is however today considered to be unisex and you can see as short as it is across the wrist i could recommend it even for a child's wrist it will have no problem fitting whatsoever i can't imagine it overlapping any human wrist the lugs will never project beyond your wrist the strap is oem fact Audemars Piguet calf on the bottom, alligator on the top, large rectangular scale, black gloss finish, monotone stitch. We have a sheer edge cut straight down showing you the layers of leather and it has a simple yellow gold pin buckle. The timepiece is in outstanding condition and nothing speaks to that more than the definition of the hallmarks on the side. Now, this is usually the first thing that goes on an older precious metal watch. This is what you would have seen from the beginning of precious metal wristwatches in Switzerland up through the early to mid 90s. The hallmarks not under the lug, not on the case back or even between the lugs, but right on the case flank. And as these get refinished, you lose that definition and depth. Here, Honestly, it looks as crisp as the day it was stamped. Now, you can also see that the lugs are welded on and that there is a perpendicular finish, satination, longitudinal, and then vertical on the lug flanks. That shows you the degree of attention to detail. Double finishing and welding the lugs and removing evidence of the welded joint shows just how much time was lavished by hand to finish this case. The lug hoods are polished. The crown is non-branded and polished. We have a double gadroon or double domed one might say double-stepped bezel. You can see that the inner bezel is entirely mirror polished to accentuate the effect of light on the dial. You can also see that the lower expanse of the dial has been entirely rose lathe cut by guilloche, giving it a wonderful artisanal and lush appearance. Taking a quick look, there are three discs of sapphire, each with four numerals, and then underneath we have little star wheels and then Paul springs. That is why the watch is called the star wheel. You can also see the carousel on which they revolve has been satinated on its top and then mirror beveled on its edge. The finish on this watch is outstanding. The module, the complication module with the star wheel is by AP. The base movement is Jeger Lecoultre, of which Audemars Piguet was a 40% stakeholder back in 1991. Now you can see the prior hour, five, exits stage right as the succeeding hour enters stage left. So now, for example, it is 6.05. Now it is 615. That is how the star wheel system works. And as you operate it, the star wheels organize the display of time. Flip it all over, and you can see there is a JLC 889 base, automatic winding with bi-directional action. You can see it has a little jeweled reversing rocker, 38 to 40 hour power reserve. It beats away at 4 hertz, it pivots on 33 joules, and it's adjusted to a high horology style, 5 positions. Uh, the watch also features hacking seconds, even though it does not include a seconds display. You can see when I pull the crown, it retains the underlying JLC 889's hacking lever. The 889 is potentially a very accurate movement, a tried and true high horology tester, uh, or I should say tractor, used in many different models from many different high-end brands. And again, it was sort of in-house at AP because they owned four-tenths of JLC back in the early 90s. This is a wonderful vintage watch, and its legacy is every wandering hours watch that has been released since, from everyone from Erwerk to Arnold & Son to Gorilla. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this Audemars Piguet Star Wheel.